Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in for another informative video today. So in this video, we will be um, diving into the basics of next generation sequencing, exploring a typical workflow and understanding the key terminologies, including what is library preparation, what are adapters, multiplexing and sample pooling. These terms, concepts, steps are important as they govern a lot of technical considerations while we perform bioinformatics analysis. Um, this is going to be a quick overview and introduction of these key concepts for anyone who is starting out and it's important to understand these terminologies and various steps that go into a typical um, next generation sequencing workflow. So next generation sequencing is not a single technique, rather it refers to a diverse set of collection of post-Sanger sequencing technologies, which enables rapid and high throughput sequencing of DNA and RNA. Um, there are various popular methods like sequencing by synthesis, by ligation, ion semiconductor, there are various methods. But the most commonly used method for um, sequencing today uh, is se sequencing by synthesis, which is performed by Illumina devices. So most often, um, not always, the term next generation sequencing specifically refers to Illumina style sequencing. DNA sequencing technologies have evolved over time and different uh, generation of sequencing technologies have been developed to improve the speed, the accuracy and cost effectiveness. So the first generation is the Sanger sequencing. So basically these devices uses the chain termination method. It's a type of sequencing method which is used. This method is time consuming, is expensive and is labor intensive. However, this method is still used for some small scale projects uh, for certain applications. Following the Sanger sequencing, um, the next generation of sequencing technologies marks a significant improvement in throughput, mainly parallelization of the sequencing process, meaning that these technologies allow for simultaneous sequencing of multiple uh, fragments. Um, the examples in this category include Illumina, Roche, and there are many various other companies that employ these um, sequencing technology. Um, these sequencing technologies allow for faster and more cost effective um, sequencing compared to the Sanger sequencing. These sequencing platforms are the dominant type of sequencing technology that are used today. Um, their capacity allows for sequencing at a very low cost. However, one drawback for these platforms is the read length. They uh, produce reads between 50 to 500 base pair in length. Um, these makes the, these um, read length uh, and reads make them make them an excellent um, candidate for resequencing projects and for performing SNP calling and targeted sequencing for very short amplicons. Following the second generation of sequencing technologies is the third generation of sequencing technologies and the examples in this category include Pacific Biosciences, PacBio and Oxford Nanopore um, technologies. These sequencing technology sequences DNA molecules without the need for amplification step and they generate longer read lengths which can be advantageous for certain applications. Uh, longer read lengths can be useful to resolve complex genomic regions and repetitive elements and structural variations uh, more effectively than shorter reads. Um, they also facilitate accurate identification of large scale genomic rearrangements, duplication, deletions and other structural variants. And they can also be helpful in haplotype phasing, distinguishing alleles of the same chromosomes, providing more accurate information on the genetic variation. Each generation of sequencing technologies has its own strength and limitation. And the choice of the sequencing technology depends on the specific requirement of the given project, like the scale of the sequencing, the read lengths which are required and the cost considerations. So today we are going to specifically focus on the steps prior to the bioinformatics analysis. Um, so this is a typical high throughput sequencing workflow and it starts with sample collection and preparation. So biological samples containing the genetic material of interest like DNA, RNA or both of them are collected and the type of the sample depends on the specific goals of the sequencing project such as whether we want to perform a whole genome sequencing, targeted gene sequencing, transcriptomic analysis, etc. Um, the common sources of DNA include blood, tissues, um, saliva, cultured cells. For RNA sequencing, samples may include total RNA or specific type of RNA like mRNA. Um, proper sample collection is critical to ensure the integrity and purity of the genetic material, minimizing the contamination and degradation of the nucleic acids. 
So following the sample collection and preparation, the next step is library preparation. So before sequencing can occur, DNA samples need to be prepared for um, analysis. This involves creating a DNA library, which is essentially a collection of DNA fragments that have been prepared for sequencing. So in this step, the DNA um, sample is broken down into smaller fragment, uh, either enzymatically or mechanically. And to these fragments, there are small DNA sequences that are attached. These are called ad uh, sequencing adapters. Now, sequencing adapters allow these fragments to bind to the sequencing platform. The sequencing platform could be a flow cell in terms of uh, when, when, when we are using Illumina or beads when we are using iron torrent. This will make more sense in the next slide. So instead of running the DNA sequencing reaction in a tube, the DNA is loaded onto the flow cell. So Illumina uses the sequencing flow cell as the sequencing platform. So the entire sequencing occurs on the flow cell. So the flow cell is nothing but a chip which has lanes and these lanes have set of um, wells. And these wells have um, various oligonucleotides attached to them, which are like single stranded oligonucleotides, which are nothing but these DNA fragments, which are complementary to these adapters that are ligated to your fragments. So in the first step, the researchers loads the uh, DNA sample onto the flow cell and each well represents a sequencing reaction. So during the sequencing process, the fluorescent signal from each of these wells are captured and are used to determine the sequence of the DNA. So Illumina uses bridge amplification and sequencing by synthesis to amplify the DNA and to sequence the DNA. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of these methods as there's a lot of resources available on the web, including the, uh, including the videos as well as the articles that explain bridge amplification and sequencing by synthesis. So if you're interested to learn more about how that works, I will be adding the link to those resources in the description section below. Once the DNA from the sample is affixed to the wells, um, the next step involves amplification of these DNA fragments. Essentially, the idea here is to create a library of identical um, copies of the DNA. Um, this step is crucial as it is important to generate enough material for sequencing. And as I said previously, Illumina uses um, bridge amplification approach to amplify um, the DNA fragments. So before moving ahead, I want to talk about the idea of multiplexing. So multiplexing is nothing but it's a method where two or more samples are um, combined in a single sequencing run. And this can help to reduce cost, uh, to optimize the resources and is more time efficient. So here, uh, along with in the library preparation step, along with adding the um, sequencing adapters, we also add sample specific barcodes. So basically, these barcodes will allow to identify from which sample it is coming from. So here in the diagram, we have index one, which is essentially a barcode for blue samples and index two is a barcode for the pink samples. And in the next step, we do something called as pooling um, these samples. So basically mixing or combining multiple DNA libraries or sample into single um, mixture before sequencing. After pooling the uh, libraries, we just move ahead with the sequencing and we get the sequencing output basically reads into a data file. And using these indexes or these unique barcodes, uh, the demultiplexer or uh, algorithm comes in and sorts these um, reads according to the indexes. So basically, it is efficiently able to identify these reads which are coming from different samples based on these um, unique barcodes. And they can be separated into different files. Uh, so basically, we would know that these reads are coming from the blue samples and these reads are coming from the pink samples. So the term uh, index and barcode is usually um, used interchangeably. Um, so some people call it index, whether some use barcode, but essentially they both serve the same purpose of um, uniquely identifying reads which are coming from specific samples. So they're unique to the samples. So common question for multiplexing um, arises is to how many samples to multiplex or how many samples to combine. And this depends on um, various factors as to um, the requirement for the um, depth of coverage for your reads in your project and the cost uh, considerations. So if you're unfamiliar with the um, depth of coverage or sequencing coverage, then I will recommend you to watch a video where I have explained what the sequence coverage or the depth of coverage is. I will be adding the link to that video in the description section below. So make sure you check that out. 
so if cost is not an issue um then you can run a single sample um which will give you a very high coverage but also at a very high sequencing cost but if you have cost considerations which is most likely the case then you can um, adjust the number of multiplex samples such that it gives you acceptable um levels of coverage at a reasonable cost uh on an extreme level if you multiplex a lot of samples then the coverage drops to unacceptable levels even though the cost of um uh, even though the cost of sequencing is reasonable so it is recommended to use cost to coverage calculators uh so you you can decide the optimal number of samples to multiplex um while maintaining acceptable levels of coverage for any particular sequencing run So at the end of the library preparation step what we end up is with a sequencing library so sequencing library is nothing but it's um the collection of our dna fragments along with the sequencing adapters and um unique barcodes in case of multiplexing um scenario and these are essentially the fragments that um the sequencing is performed on sequencing run refers to the actual process of reading the dna sequences in a sample um different sequencing um sequencing platforms have different technologies and chemistries um for reading dna um some of the common platforms include um illumina pacbio and oxford nanopore each with its own strengths and weaknesses um illumina being one of the most commonly used uh, platform today uses um a sequencing by synthesis approach and again i will be adding the link to various resources that explain how that works in the description section below So from the sequencing machine what we get is reads and reads are stored in a file format called .fastq file and this is how a .fastq file looks like uh previously i have created a video where i have gone over um uh, what information is stored in this file format so if you are interested to learn more about that then i will be adding the link to that video in the description section below so this is essentially the raw read files which are most often the starting point for bioinformatics analysis so from here on we start with these reads and we perform the alignment or assembly and perform the further downstream analysis So that brings me to the end of this quick and short video. Um if you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more bioinformatics related content. If you have any questions or suggestions for um any further or new topics to um cover leave it in the comment section below. Uh share this video with your friends and coworkers if you found it informative. Uh please stay tuned for more bioinformatics related content. I uh, greatly appreciate your support and I will see you in the next video.